Become the master of the universe. Hello, my friends. How are you doing today? I want to show you a fantastically easy process to create amazing compositions with AI and make everybody ask you, why do you rock so hard? And you say, because I can. Also, check out my much longer video on Patreon, where I'm going to show you how to use Kitbash and get much more amazing results and also including modeling a simple scene. Let's get started. First, we need some amazing stuff for the low, low price of free. And that is going to be Blender. It's a free 3D editor and it is super amazing and very powerful. You just click your download button, you install it on your system and that's it. It's super easy. Then of course we need 3D models and on Sketchfab you can get free models. You click up here on search and search for whatever you need. And then for license, you can click here and you can go down here to free standard, but you can also look through the CC or Creative Commons licenses. And here, for example, CC by it says outdoor must be credited. Commercial use is allowed. You can click on something, for example, this, and then you can click and drag your mouse to rotate around the scene to see what is going on. If you like this rendering here, this house that you get, and then down here, you can download the model. Also, you need an account, but the account is for free, so don't worry about that. After we have downloaded Blender and installed it and downloaded our 3D model, we're going to go into Blender. You have this cube here, which is selected, hit delete, and this is gone. Then the next step is going to be file and then import. And mostly these are going to be either OBJ files or they are going to be FBX files. In this case, I'm going to click here on FBX and then simply go to the folder where the model is that you've downloaded. You can see here model FBX. So I click on that import FBX and it might take a little bit until the model actually loads. In this case, you can see here that the model is upside down. This doesn't matter to us at all. So click your mouse wheel and then you can return this to the other side. You can rotate around that to any kind of position. So that is already super easy. And here is another trick. When you hold control and mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. And when you hold shift and mouse wheel, you can move it up and down. So that's very, very useful. OK. So what do we have to do next? We need a depth map from that scene, from the perspective of the camera. Every time you start a project, you have a camera up here on the right. So you want to click on that and then you want to hit N on your keyboard. This will open up this tab here and there you want to go to view and you want to click on camera to view. So click on that and then also on your keyboard, you want to click together control alt and zero. This will bring you into the camera perspective. So now you see inside of that rectangle what the camera is seeing and you can use your mouse because we have linked that to the viewport. Now you can use your mouse to move around that object. If you don't like that standard focal length you get here, you can actually go down here to the camera icon and there you have the focal length and you can adjust it, for example, to something a little bit more cinematic like 35 millimeter. And then you can zoom into that. You can rot rotate around that until you find something that you like and you think, hey, that is a cool scene. I want to render this. All right. So let's say this is going to be our scene. Now we need to have a depth map. The way we're going to do that is by creating a camera view that shows just mist over the scene. So for that up here, you want to click on this viewport shading icon. Then you want to go here to the pop down menu for shading. You want to click on combined and you want to click on mist like that. That's already pretty good. Now we also want to click here on our show overlays so we don't see them like that. And then next, what we need to do here is we want to go here to the globe icon, click on that and then go to mist pass. And here you can set the settings for how your mist is looking. And for that, you want to play around until you have something that looks like a good depth map. The reason why we're doing this inside of the 3D software is because here we're just getting a much better quality, a much sharper, crisper depth map than we would get otherwise. 
By the way, I just realized we don't have a ground plane. This is why we have this line here, not so good. So we want to create a ground plane that's actually very easy. We go up here to add, mesh, and then plane. The plane is going to be very small. We can't even see it right now. So let's switch back here to our viewport shading like that. And then we click here to scale. There we have it. And we simply want to click here on that white circle, drag that out and voila, there we have our ground plane. And then here on the move, we click there and we move it down. So it's not hitting everything. We can leave it a little bit like that because I want to have like a swamp situation. And then we're going to go back here to our shading. Boom. And now we have a ground. Easy peasy, my friends. Okay. Next, we're going to export this. So we're going to go here to view and then to viewport render image. And we have this view and that's basically everything we need. So we go here to image and then to save as and you want to save that in any folder you think is good with the name you think is good down here. Next, we're heading over to Krita. We go to file and open. We are going to open up the file that we have created like that. Now this is the inverted view of the depth map we actually need. So you go here to filter, adjust, and then invert. This is our correct depth map. Now on the right side here, we have our install of the Krita plugin. If you don't have that installed yet, and if you don't have the Krita software, watch this tutorial to check out how to do all of that. By the way, here's a little advice for you. If you want to load all of the models you have inside of Automatic 11.11, click up here on the cogwheel. You see here model checkpoint and the selection of the model checkpoints. There's a folder icon next to that. You click on that and this will bring you to the install of this version of the Krita AI, which is actually using ComfyUI. But don't worry, you're not going to see anything of ComfyUI. However, you want to click on the ComfyUI base folder here inside of your Krita folder. And then when you scroll down, you have here an extra model paths YAML. Now for you, it's not going to say YAML at the end. It's going to say example or thing like that. So you have to delete the end of the file name until it says dot YAML hit enter. So it's becoming a YAML file, right click and then open with and editor inside of there. You have the base path. So you want to set up here the base path of where your automatic 1111 is installed. So the automatic 1111 folder and then these lines here, you have to turn them the other side as you can see down here. So what I do is I select one from down here, copy it and paste it to all of these three positions up here until everything is nice because otherwise the path just doesn't work. And then you simply save that and you close that and you go back to Krita. You want to get up here to connection and you want to click here on stop and then on restart so that this is actually loading all of the models. Now that we have done that, we can go into styles and you can select all of your models in here. So that's very useful and you can set it up any way you want. But be warned that anytime you change something, it's directly saved into this style preset here. So you want to click here on plus before you make any changes, because otherwise you're changing a preset you have already created. That's not a good idea. OK, so for me, I've already everything set up. So up here, I'm going to select a style that I have created. This is for Chaganaut Lightning. Once you've written your prompt, what you want to do after you've written the prompt is to use a depth map. This is our depth map. So here you have this little plus icon, click on that and then select here depth map or depth. And here background, this is the layer that we already have because this is what we opened as a file. You want to have the depth map on 100% and the strength also on 100% so that the AI is creating an image without looking at that image. So 100% AI generated only based on the depth map. Click on generate. And as you can see here, we can get a really fantastic scene. This is our depth map. This is the image we have created with that. And of course, you can change that to anything you want. So here we have the same model of the house, but in a snow landscape. And I would say 
That is absolutely fantastic. Now, if you ask yourself, why don't you just use a painted input? That's so much simpler. You can, of course, just rotate the scene to another perspective. You can zoom in and out without having to repaint the complete scene. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.